Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, as the first couple of hundreds of French and European nationals are evacuated from coup hit Niger by Paris, the military governments of Mali and Burkina Faso say that any foreign armed intervention in Yemen will be treated as a declaration of war against them all. Also, the internet is still out in Senegal and scooters and motorcycles have been banned a day after fatal clashes over the dissolution of the country's main opposition party and the indictment of its leader, Usman Sonko. And Nigeria's president says that the scrapping of a petrol subsidy has saved over $1.3 billion in just two months. Bola Tinubu insists that despite it deepening a cost of living crisis, the changes will eventually boost the economy. But first, the first evacuation flight for French citizens in Niger has taken off with 262 people on board. In the wake of last week's ousting of President Mohamed Bazoum in a military coup, three planes were sent to Niamey to bring back French and European nationals who want to leave. Although West African regional body ECOWAS has announced travel and economic sanctions against Niger and showed a willingness to intervene using force, Neighbouring Mali and Burkina Faso, both of which have seen coups over the last few years, have said that they're in Niamey's corner. Kemi Nedlek has more. Niger's new military leaders may be isolated, but they are not alone. Mali and Burkina Faso released a joint statement hitting out at ECOWAS after the regional bloc vowed to use force if Niger's coup leaders do not reinstate deposed President Mohamed Bezoum within seven days. A dangerous move, the Gentus warned. The government of transition of Burkina Faso and of Mali the transitional governments of Burkina Faso and Mali warned that any military intervention against Niger would be tantamount to a declaration of war against us. I repeat, we warned that any military intervention against Niger would be tantamount to a declaration of war against Burkina Faso and Mali. They also denounced the sanctions ECOWAS imposed on Sunday as illegal and inhumane. All commercial and financial transactions between member states in Niger are suspended. The country is dependent on foreign aid, and the ban could hit its people hard. Guinea also expressed support for Niger's coup leaders and disowned the sanctions. The military in Conakry has been at the helm since toppling its own president in 2021. <laughs> The CNRD emphasizes that a military intervention against Niger would inevitably lead to the breakdown of ECOWAS. Similarly, the brotherly peoples of Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger and Guinea aspire to more recognition and respect for their sovereignty. This is the third military coup in the region, raising concerns that the juntas could hamper Western powers trying to control the growing jihadist threat in the Sahel and turn to Russia's Wagner Group instead. In Senegal, at least two people were killed in Monday's unrest that broke out over the indictment of the country's main opposition politician, Usman Sonko. His PASTEF party was dissolved, and his hopes of running in next year's presidential election are now distant ones. His supporters are deeply frustrated, and our correspondents say that across the country, the tensions are still palpable. A sense of calm has returned to most of Dakar's suburbs. Following Usman Sonko's incarceration, this neighborhood was among the many that saw violent clashes this week. Opposition supporters are still angry to see their leader behind bars. I'm against his incarceration. He hadn't done anything. They imprisoned him by force. There's nothing we can do. It's a deplorable situation. The signs of Monday's unrest are still visible throughout the city. Police and security forces are still deployed along the main roads of the capital. Markets have reopened, but sellers fear further trouble. Mandiaye says he hasn't sold anything since the start of the week. I came to work, but I hesitated. I don't think I will stay here all day. I will go home soon. The situation in the country is worrying. The Interior Ministry has banned the use of all motorbikes and scooters, ostensibly as a security measure. It claims to have limited internet access for the same reason. 
The government has taken all the necessary measures to ensure that security reigns in Senegal. We have seen protests, but not on the scale we saw last time round. The state has taken precautions to assure the security of the Senegalese people. Protests also gripped the southern city of Ziganshore, Zonko's hometown on Monday. At least two people were killed. Prosecutors in the murder case against a Kenyan cult leader who encouraged his hundreds of supporters to starve themselves to death to find salvation are bringing charges against 41 people rescued from the sect. Investigators into Paul McKenzie's ministry in the Shakahola forest in Kenya's southeast have exhumed over 400 bodies, many of which show signs of having been violently killed. Over 600 people are still missing. Some of the other defendants in the case are allegedly guardians of children who were killed or died in the Shakahola forest. In DR Congo, in Mai Ndombe, in the west, over 300 people have died in sectarian violence since last June. That's according to Human Rights Watch. The conflict was initially triggered by a land dispute, but fighting involving the Mabondo militia has since spread beyond Mai Ndombe to the neighboring provinces of Kwilu and Kwango. It's even reached the commune of Maluku, which is on the outskirts of the capital, Kinshasa. Our team sent us this report. Marenk Milabo is a survivor of a conflict. A year ago, he fled his village in Maidombe province to escape violence that has hit the region, leaving everything behind him. I had to leave quickly because militiamen entered our village. I left on foot with my family. That's when I got shot in the leg. I'm in a lot of pain now. It's difficult to walk normally. In June 2022, violence erupted between two communities in western DR Congo, pitting the Teke against the Yaka. The conflict began over a dispute linked to customary taxes and access to land. Mame Pinelli is traumatized. They killed my husband and two of my children with machetes. I couldn't do anything. I haven't been able to mourn because we couldn't bury them. I had to flee to save my other three children. She is one of several thousand people who have taken refuge in Kinshasa. Despite being at a distance from the fighting, they all fear reprisals. The conflict began in Maindombe province, but has now also spread to the outskirts of Kinshasa. In the commune of Maluku, a video showing a traditional chief who was beheaded by one of the militias has spread panic. This human rights activist thinks that wider forces are behind the violence. It's quite clear that politicians are behind it, aiming to sow chaos, and from our point of view, to perhaps prevent elections from taking place. A general election is scheduled for the end of the year. In a bid to bring peace to the conflict zone, the authorities have established a commission to investigate crimes committed in the western part of the country. They have also launched military operations to secure Maindombe. The aim is to avoid human casualties, so we are in the process of controlling and containing them. If you follow closely, the scale that existed before is no longer the same as it is today. At least 300 people have been killed, according to humanitarian aid workers. But with the region inaccessible to both NGOs and journalists, the true death toll could be far higher. Nigeria's president has defended his decision to scrap a petrol subsidy that's triggered a spike in the cost of living for particularly those least able to take the hit. Bola Tanubu, who said that despite the short-term chaos, the country has saved over 1.32 billion dollars in just two months. Now, he insists that the changes will eventually give a desperately needed boost to the economy. Asam Olekoya tells us more. Nigeria's President Bola Tinumbu is already facing crisis after just two months in office. Discontent is growing across the country as Nigerians face unprecedented hardship. Since coming to power, the local currency, the Naira, has suffered about a 100 percent devaluation. Within the same period, the cost of petrol has gone up from 190 naira to more than 600 naira. The price of food and other essential goods and services like medicine and transportation have also gone up substantially. The situation is so bad that many families say they cannot afford to, to feed. The economic hardship is the result of President Tinumbu's decision to remove petroleum subsidy and abolish multiple exchange rates. The president said these two policies 
we are benefiting a few to the detriment of the nation. He said billions of dollars spent annually on petrol subsidy will be saved and used to develop infrastructures. In an address to the nation, the president announced measures to reduce the hardship Nigerians are going through. His plans include the distribution of food and an increase in workers' salary. But many Nigerians feel the measures do not go far enough. Workers say they will go ahead with a nationwide strike to protest the economic hardship. Two Nigerian cities, Kano and Bini, have already seen protest. There is a possibility that protest will also happen in many other cities. Sam Olakoya there for us. And finally, Tunisian swimming champion Ahmed Ayoub Hafnawi is back home with a bang. Back from the World Championships in Fukui, Fu, Fukuoka in Japan, he was met with an emotional welcome in Tunisia on Tuesday morning. The athlete was welcomed by his family and friends and fans at the airport in Tunis, along with a ministerial delegation, the Minister of Youth and Sport. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for joining us. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care. The world is ever changing. The news doesn't wait. France 24 gives a global perspective that an educated, intelligent, and active viewer is going to want to have to be able to fully understand the issues of the day. That's why it will always be there to help make sense of world events. J'ai l'habitude de suivre France 24 partout où je me trouve et ce grâce à mon smartphone parce que je ne reste pas souvent devant la télé. Quand une information survient sur la toile, j'utilise l'application de France 24 pour vérifier l'authenticité. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what, France 24 is with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité. On France24.com, click live. Find the stories you want to watch or to read about. Live news, 24 hours a day in four languages. Explore the topics that captivate you. Are you looking for the latest news or to watch a show on demand? Follow us. Live international news is just a click away. Liberté, égalité, actualité.